I received a question whether angelic beings are also part or confined to the four cosmoses or are they limited in their manifestation to one or another cosmos. Um, it's important to realize that these four cosmoses um, they are more you could say a, a method or a flow of spirits uh, who are using a similar method for their progression. So in the same way as in our world we have many people who work on themselves or on their spiritual development in different ways but we all exist in the same planet in the same way also these four cosmoses uh, coexist uh, with each other. And even though I might be from one cosmos talking to another cosmos uh, we still have contact with each other. It is just a difficult contact because we come from a completely different mindset and we have very different goals. So it could be compared with me maybe talking to um, uh, some Inuit uh, in Greenland about how my life is and how things are and what is good or bad. Uh, we don't speak the same language. We have a completely different set of reference. Um, we have a completely different culture. And in this same way these cosmoses are also um, separated by their view, by their habits, by their ideas. Uh, but it's not a very strict line that things cannot cross over or influence things from another cosmos. Uh, it is very possible all the time when I read a book or when I watch the news I also get information which is generated by other cosmoses which enters into my life which can influence me or not. Um, so the four cosmoses are in a way coexistent and um, the angelic beings themselves are in a way not so much part of the flow which form these cosmoses because these cosmoses are created by our desire to yeah, grow, to improve ourselves, to evolve. And an angelic being is what it is and uh, if it needs to be different it will be made different. So in that way an angelic being is not evolving or growing or um, working on itself. Um, it is more um, it has a certain power or a certain role and if it is insufficient to that role it will be different or it will receive help or um, but it is not a very slow arduous process of self-improvement for them as it is for the beings which are separated from the divine source uh, so in that way they're not part of any of the cosmoses they are not seeing things from that perspective. They are not seeing it from an Arimanic perspective as like God is greater than me and therefore there is a hierarchy of angels and I must obey the higher angels and command the lower angels. This is not how their mindset works at all. They know only one will, only one authority and that is of the, the most highest, the most divine power. And there is nothing else, no other authority. Uh, so this is why they don't relate to the Arimanic cosmos. Um, the Luciferical cosmos, which is all about um, yeah, growth, self-improvement, seeking the light, and this is also an impulse which is quite unknown to them. Um, of course they strive to, to comprehend, to listen to the most supreme being. Um, and by their exposure to the supreme being, uh, also they are altered. Um, it is in the same way as like a, a stone which you place in the sun. It is heated up by the light, by the power of the sun. But in the same way angels are continually trying to receive and to catch the light of the most supreme being. And in this way also, in the same way they are heated up by the sun like a stone, but are also transformed by the radiance of the supreme being and uh, that way they are changed but it is not a process of working on themselves rather than just being as receptive or as attuned 
as they can be. So, no, they're not part uh, in their mindset of the Luciferical cosmos. If we look at the Satanic cosmos, here we can find some tendencies, but mainly in the fallen angels. Um, because the Satanic cosmos is very much about uh, brotherhood, friendship, uh, love, uh, mutual support. And there are some angels which have as a task or as a function to provide that healing, to provide that counseling, um, so that yeah, the divine will is carried out. But what is very different is that beings from the satanic cosmos, their brother or their sister um, is really the most important thing to them. And for an angelic being, it is only the will of the divine. And if it aids the plan of the divine that the person is helped, they will help this person. But they don't feel that same bond of brotherhood or kinship as, yeah, or love as animals do. Um, there is no similar equality. You can compare it a little bit with, um, I have a job to do and uh, to do my work better I need to get rid of all the clutter on my desk. It doesn't mean that I love my desk, but it's just more efficient if it is not cluttered and if I can work uh, more easily, get a quick overview of what is going on. And in the same way they are working upon uh, the incarnated beings and different kinds of spirits, uh, but not with the purpose or the, with that same, same connection. So they're not of the satanic cosmos. So then we have the divine cosmos. Um, in a way they are similar to beings of the divine cosmos and they tend to have a lot of contact with beings of the divine cosmos. But beings in the divine cosmos as we know, they are beings which are still striving. Uh, they are not angelic themselves. And they just serve angels, they serve the Holy Spirit, they serve the Creator. Um, but they're not in constant harmony or constant contact. There is still a separation between them uh, because of lack of qualities or because of impurities or because they are supposed to be separated. Uh, maybe they have been sent into this separation, into exile. Uh, to perform a certain task after which they can return. Um, so also, although there is more kinship between the angel and the being in the divine cosmos, they're not the same. So there's really, uh, yeah, you can't say that an angel is a part of any cosmos. Uh, we do find that angels work more in one cosmos or another, depending on their nature. Um, for instance, uh, Raphael, um, the angel of healing, um, is very active in the satanic cosmos because healing is about plants and stones and herbs and animals and spirits working together, helping each other, supporting each other. Um, so, of course, the angel Raphael, who is the angel of healing, works with all these powers. He teaches all these plants and animals and stones, how to heal each other, how to support each other, uh, how to benefit from each other's contact and company. Um, if we look at uh, the Archangel Michael, for instance, so yes, of course, there's a division in where they are active, but ultimately the angel is carrying out its mission and wherever um, the mission can be carried out, that is where it will manifest itself. So if the mission can be carried out in the Arimani cosmos, it will go there, it will manifest itself there. It's a very cosmos, the same, and the same with the satanic or the divine cosmos. The angel is not confined to any one cosmos or another, but depending on its nature, that the beings from one cosmos or another might be more receptive to its emanations, to its teachings, uh, to its influence. So you could say that it is rather the beings within that cosmos um, invite the angel by being receptive to it, by being open to it, and by being good instruments for the angel 
the angel will manifest itself. It will use them to, uh, yeah, to work the divine will in them. So, I hope this gives a little bit more understanding about where the angel themselves are located and what their interaction is with the four cosmoses.